Welcome to Hey Guys, an internet obsessed podcast where we discuss all your favorite social media stars, what they're doing, and how we feel about it. I am your host, Amanda Hasica, a content producer for Instant, which basically just means I keep my finger on the pulse of the internet at all times. And if you don't know what Instant is, it's a new media outlet and video platform dedicated entirely to covering digital creators. Much like the ones I am joined with today, Yay! we have Jocelyn Davis and Lily Martin from yeah. Clever. Hi. Thank you guys so much for joining me Thanks today. For Thanks us. for inviting us. Reunion. It is a reunion. So I used to work for Clever back in the uh, day. One and of our best writers. I know. <laughs> Thanks. Um, <laughs> but it was just, I haven't been there for a few years and it's just been so fun to watch you guys like catapult into like the YouTube galaxy like stardom Isn't it everything just the weirdest because even before you worked at clever we had known you forever yeah. you were at teen yeah. uh-huh. you were at celeb buzz so we've all in been the in the same world you've been with us since yeah. like i don't know 2009 or 10 yeah. or something it's when we were world it's a just small world it's just starting yeah so it's just been so exciting so if you guys don't know what clever is clever is a lifestyle brand that i like to think so there's clever news clever tv clever style um, so they do lots of fun stuff. They do beauty tripping where they go and try crazy beauty regimens and do cr- like you guys just do the craziest, craziest things. It's so much fun to watch. Some of my most mortifying moments. <laughs> yeah, they're all, all most, captured. The most the rewarding at the same time. <laughs> yeah. So I know. So back in the day, like beauty break was just kind of like, let's do like a makeup <laughs> tutorial. Like, let's do like eyeshadow or something. So funny. So how? I mean, I was there for a little bit of it. But do you guys want, kind of want to explain how it evolved into what it is today? Sure. Um, so basically, when I first started as Jocelyn's intern originally back oh, in 2012. My biggest yep. success of all time. This girl's a star. I'm her momager, Mom, yeah. for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. It's very much appreciated. Yeah. But um, so when I first started, when I started working full time, I was assistant producer and campaign manager. So I was working on all of our ad campaigns. Oh, right. And it was a brand came to us and they wanted to do a makeup tutorial series. And we mostly did entertainment news. So it was perfect. Like, we'll do celebrity makeup tutorials. But we wanted to get into the YouTube world. So we were like, we're going to use beauty gurus. And (laughs) then I was essentially, I got promoted to producer like during this entire journey, I guess. But um, I remember we used to film it at the YouTubers' houses. Mm. And that was how I met Megan Rinks. Megan Rosette at the time. Oh, the beauty (laughs) guru, guru, formerly known as. Um, and Lauren Elizabeth and the two of them, we filmed at their apartments at Park La Brea a few mm-hmm. years ago. And so that's like a little apartment complex in LA that, that like, all of the YouTubers like Brody Jenner used to live yes. there like back in the well, day. Did Lauren like Conrad very... live there at some I point in time? I think she lived like across from the Grove. In the Palazzo. But like that whole, like, she that whole general somewhere. area is like very exactly. like, oh well, you know. <laughs> so it started and it was like, get Selena Gomez's makeup. Right. But then like Megan was not great at makeup <laughs> and I would be off to the side being like, oh, I don't think that really looks like yeah. it. But I guess that's okay, whatever. And no one watched it. It got like 2,000 views an episode on Clever TV, which had over a million subscribers. So it was like, this was doing really pretty bad. bad. (laughs) So cut to everyone kind of stopped paying attention and they were like, oh, I guess we should still make it because sometimes brands will buy into it. But let's move it to the style channel. Maybe it'll do well there. Even worse, that's like being sent to go somewhere to die. Like Clever Style style at the time was like, it had been dormant for a year. It didn't even have a hundred thousand thousand subscribers like no. we would put up a video like every 10 months maybe and it was literally like all right we're just sending you off to die yeah. out so in the it was wilderness. just like okay well maybe it'll do better over there and then i oh, got there well, i was like thank you yeah. and so then no one paid attention yeah. so i could kind of do whatever i wanted and i was just sick of us trying to pretend that we knew what we were doing no. because we absolutely did not no. so instead of pretending we just started being very honest about everything yeah. and I, the first video that really did well was um, Jocelyn and Megan, and then I make appearances because I was still producing it, but mm-hmm. uh, Five Weirdest Ways to Curl Your Hair. Oh, yeah. And it was like It was just now looking mess. back. Now <laughs> looking back on it, it's like one of the least weird things we've ever done on the show. <laughs> the but at the time, it was us crazy. just being willing to be like, we legitimately have no idea what we're doing. And at the time, Lily wasn't even on camera. She would just make these like little cameos. Because they didn't but know the anything. But the audience was like obsessed. <laughs> Obsessed with her. No. And then Megan got her nose job. Oh, <laughs> yes. I, I feel like that. also Megan's nose job helped catapult Beauty Break even more because then we had become friends from the show. Right. And then she got her nose done and she vlogged her entire recovery period. Mm-hmm. And I helped film and edit 
all and upload all of those videos. So then I was making appearances there. Those were like my. But first she couldn't do a lot of the stuff on Beauty Break. Yeah. Mm. So and she took some time off to so recover. Lily was like her so surrogate. Lily's like oh, I was the guinea pig that would come in because I would be like, okay, I need you to dip your face in ice water, and she'd be like, I can't, my nose is gonna fall off. <laughs> Yeah, He'd be like no, it's not. But fine, I'll do it. And from yeah. there, it was like the audience exploded. Yeah, it was crazy. And especially after being at Clever for so many years, right. literally since you were in high school, I've been working <laughs> at Clever that long. <laughs> to see us have like this rebirth and this reemergence for content that's literally just about us being ourselves right. was kind of crazy yeah. and also super fun and a new challenge, which then spawned. All these other right. cool shows that we've been able to do as a result, 100% as a result of Beauty Break's success. Mm -hmm. And apparently people just like seeing failure. Yeah. Because I mean, that's I, much like more than success. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. But yeah, I've, um, you know, Jocelyn, you mentioned you've been with Clever forever. So if you don't, like, if you don't know Clever's backstory, yeah. it's, I am obsessed with it. I think it's so funny. So it was basically like you and your this other host Dana Ward, mm -hmm. who's there for years and years. You guys were like in someone's garage, Georgia's yep. garage, exactly. West Covina. Yeah. So I started at Clever in two thousand eight or two thousand seven, which like and YouTube was, was like a baby. It was YouTube so didn't new. even have a partner program. Yeah. I was like, this will be good for my reel. These guys seem <laughs> legit. Um, and because we shot partially at a studio space we rented in the valley, mm -hmm. and then. When we started really picking up steam, it became apparent that like the studio space was expensive to rent. YouTube wasn't paying that much money, but we really just like wanted to go all in. Mm -hmm. So we started shooting in West Covina, which is like far, far away. It's we actually where what's that show on the CW? Uh, my, my crazy, crazy ex girlfriend. Yeah. That's West Covina. Yeah. That's where we shot. It is far from LA. Yeah. And um, like we started shooting place. there every day. There was no AC. It would get so hot that George, the guy who started Clever, would be like you're so sweaty you look so <laughs> gross take a break or like on Fridays I'll never forget we had to shoot early because the gardener would come and it, the audio would get too effed up so we would have to stop shooting because yeah. of it but it was such a slow burn so um so clever tv started growing we started clever movies then we're like let's get our own studio in Hollywood mm -hmm. um that's when we launched a bunch of other channels we had all the staff come on full time mm -hmm. and from there it was just like it was just kind of like it just balls regressed. to the walls craziness. Yeah. But there was definitely like it's been a long journey. It's almost been 10 years. Right. So it's not like any of this has happened overnight. Mm -hmm. Definitely. But entertainment news, we still are the number one outlet on YouTube, which is great and something we're super excited about. But as a result of that and that awesome audience, we've been able to spawn this whole other side to our content, which uh, you know, a handful of people that work at Clever are involved in more of the personality content, mm -hmm. which is so fun and a totally mm -hmm. different challenge and a totally different beast and things that we always wanted to do before, but just never had the chance. Mm -hmm. And um, honestly, it's all because of the audience. Like if they didn't like us mm -hmm. and if they didn't watch... Yeah. We wouldn't be doing it. And the so. cool thing is, like, I, as someone who worked at Clever, like, everyone just, like, is that much fun. Like, that's actually, like, the environment that mm -hmm. Clever has. Like, it's right. not a facade. It's not anything. By like, this time, people would have figured it out, totally. I think. Like, when you're in our office and you see, like, it's literally not a big deal to see, like, someone famous walk by in a dinosaur costume, <laughs> followed by someone on a hoverboard. Right. Right. Not like, anymore, for, though. Those got out. They got out a lot uh -oh. in our office. Oh, there was an accident. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. But, yeah, it's a great environment to be in. And now we have this ridiculous show called Lunchy Break, which is, like, Mm -hmm. Our low budge version of the Kardashians, like real low budge. <laughs> it was actually just an excuse that we could get free food, but um, that's I great. love it. That's, that's our great. vlog show, and actually, it seems like that people will come to us and be like, "My favorite show is Lunchy Break." We're like, yeah. it was just us in the car. It's <laughs> always the things like as you know when you create things. You can put so much time and so much effort into certain things and, like, nothing will come of them. It's always the things that you're just kind of like, I guess I'm going to do this. Well, and, and that's like, what's so flattering is that people's favorite show is literally, like, the least effort. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we're like, we're canceling everything. I'm like, so okay, so I just vlog every day. That's all you want. But honestly, I think that's such a good reflection, not to get too deep, of life in general. Mm -hmm. Like, when you're not – you have no expectations. You're just having fun. You're just being yourself. Like, that's when the best stuff happens because right. you're not, like, stressed out like I need to insert a photo asset at yeah. three seconds it's like you know like right. let's just stop thinking about everything and like just yeah. go for it yeah. it's apparently our brand now <laughs> <laughs> just do it it's like Nike um so I you guys like mentioned vlogging one thing I would like like love to get your opinions on is you know obviously they're the really famous like vloggers out there there's like Joey Graceffa and there's people who just you know Logan Paul and Jake Paul and they just do it like day in day out mm -hmm. 
Do you think that there's sort of like a double-edged sword to being a vlogger? Because, you know, on one hand, it's so fun. And, like, all you have to do is, like, be yourself and record it and put it on the internet. But, like, as with any job, like, you could have the – I like my job. I love my job. There are moments where you're just like, I don't want to do it. You know, so it's like – but that's their life day in day out you can't ever really stop living your mm-hmm. life well so especially where do you kind of land on that i definitely think double-edged sword for oh sure. for sure because yeah. on one hand it's like look it come with me and experience all this cool stuff with me but then like what if you have a moment you don't want people yeah. to experience with like, or what if you're having a boring also, week yeah. yeah well that's also it's like a lot of these um vloggers are able to do it because they have very interesting lives and are right. like doing stuff I don't know what you would do if, like, literally when I'm not working, I'm, like, in my bed. Right. Like, I don't know what I would be vlogging. And also, right. I think there is a misconception that vlogging is easy. Yeah. But it's, it's absolutely not. Like, you just not. Something and you put it up on the... It's like, no, no you have to still edit that. You still have to try to find a way to make it entertaining. And a lot of these people are doing it every mm-hmm. single day, which is so daunting. Well, and I feel like, for the like, most part, anyone that does do it every day eventually comes to a point they go, look... I'm going to have to... I, I need to take a break. Right. I can't do it anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think people who are like, oh, considering like I want to go into a vlogging career, right. if there are people that do that, I think should think about like setting expectations at a, not an everyday level and also developing out like a few series they're doing mm-hmm. too that they can shoot in bulk well, or whatever. Well, that's thing with vlogging. You can't really bulk shoot it as yeah. much no. because also people are gonna be like able the to whole point out. of vlogging is to be more timely and it like, right. look at this was what I did today. Not yeah. like this is what I did four months ago. Because yeah. sometimes we'll, we only do our vlog show once a week but sometimes we're like, crap, we gotta <laughs> yeah. go do something fun. Yeah. And you know, for us, fun is like going to Olive Garden or like yeah, Chili's yeah, yeah. or something. Yeah. So it's like, totally our easy. Our expectations are low. <laughs> and we have a lot of people mm-hmm. in our crew too. Like whereas with some of these people who are like, I'm just, just a one man show and I got to be interesting. Like, yeah. damn. I also feel like there's the element of like being able to like live in the moment. Because mm-hmm. there's so much like if you're just so concerned with what you're going to capture, what you're going to get, like you're not really thinking about just life and living it. Mm-hmm. Well, I always wonder that with um, people in relationships that vlog a lot. Oh, because yeah. like are you doing it because that's what you would be doing in your relationship? Or are you doing it because right. you have a camera on you and right. you think that people will think it's cute? Yeah. I don't know. That really stresses me out. Know, like I social agree. media and relationships in general. Yeah. Well, cause I'm I don't like, doubt that they what if start it work out from a good point. But yeah. then and like, like how many people Ooh. stay together just because they've done like yeah. they feel trapped channels or... and well, relationships yeah. are already freaking hard enough. Well, and then yeah. look at someone like Shane and Lisa, like they're still great friends. They're and amazing. They're like, they still get Shisa like yeah. shipped constantly, yeah. and like Shane's in another relationship. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that would suck to have that follow around, yeah. follow you around for like a long time after. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's just it's a huge. It seems just very daunting to have, and then it, you know you feel. I feel like there's also this aspect of if you're super open about it, you can't just like sweep things under. Like if things happen, you need to explain to your audience. Yeah. But at the same time, like. Do you owe them an explanation? That's the hard it's thing like, is like, you know, there's been people on YouTube who've been in relationships and marriages. They've vlogged their weddings. They've mm-hmm. vlogged their proposals. They've vlogged every single minute and they're very open about it. And then when things go wrong, they don't want to talk about it. Yeah, and I feel like the audiences feel entitled, feel to, entitled yeah. and a sense of ownership over it because yeah. they were so open from the beginning. I'm of the belief that like people are people at the end of the day. They should do whatever is best for their lives. But from a content strategy perspective, it's like you can see why the audience would be like, why are you abandoning me right, now? Yeah, right. That's why I'm just like, <clears throat> can't even imagine vlogging every day. Yeah, that stresses me the F out, That just honestly. seems exhausting. I mean, it blurs the lines also because you are putting out content. So then when people are watching it, they're watching it as entertainment. So it'd be mm-hmm. like when your favorite couple on a TV show breaks up, like you're yeah. devastated. I mean, but I'm then still this not over like Jessica real. and Nick. Exactly. But then like... <laughs> They like, are like seriously. Chicken on the sea. I know. It's that kind of love that lasts I a agree. lifetime. Kush. <laughs> Same. Same. Right? <laughs> so you get it. I um I'm there's this other podcast that I listen to and there's like a Facebook group for it. And we are like everyone is like obsessed. We like still all talk about Nick and Jessica like to this it, day. What about so Meet sweet. the Barkers? I mean, yeah. my gosh, it's like TBT, the kiss man. of death of these and shows. Is, is Bam Margera still with his didn't he have one too? I don't know. No, is he married? Nope. I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, it's just it's such an interesting 
thing to think about. And like, just so I, feel, I think about, like, how invested I was in, like, Britney mm-hmm. and Justin. To well, I was like, just going to say, like, I still I feel invested. Do you remember Britney and Kevin Chaotic? They were, oh, like, the first vlogging what couple. Because yeah. they literally <laughs> shot that themselves. The first <laughs> vlog couple. They kind of were. It's true. I mean, and I think the thing is, too, with vlogger couples is they let you in so much. You know, they, I mean, there's obviously, like, the Justins and Selenas who, like, you know, will, like, give little pieces here and there, but they, like, let you in. And to you their just, home. Totally. Like, like you kudos feel, to them. I wouldn't, I don't think I could right. do it. I mean, any other, any final thoughts on, like, vlogging? And I think it's great. I think it's what makes YouTube and the internet so, exciting. so successful and so exciting. And really just, like, the content that's being made in general now. Like, I think even some traditional outlets are moving in this direction is, like, People, viewers, audiences want something real. Mm -hmm. Like they want to see your real lives. They want to see your zits. They want to see your cellulite. They want to see it all because that's what they connect with. And that's the beauty and the beast of the internet is like, where do you draw the line? And I think you as a creator, like us people who are, you know, in the content, you have to sort of think about that. And I think it is something good to think about before you start just putting it all out there like for me for example if I have a personal problem or something I'm going through like I want to deal with it with myself first before I tell the world about it and there's might be some things I'll never talk about because Mm -hmm. I never get over or whatever but I think you got to put your own mental sanity and health first I agree you know well said well said so moving on uh, one thing I wanted to talk to you guys about that's sort of like has YouTube a blaze this week mm-hmm. is the um, LGBTQ restriction. So mm-hmm. if you guys haven't heard about this, uh, YouTube has a restriction mode that's been in place for about seven years now. It's nothing new, but someone, uh, I forget the name of the vlogger, but a girl, this like British kind of YouTuber, she's a little bit smaller, but she realized that with the restriction mode on, a lot of LGBTQ uh, content was being blocked. So, you know, vlogs or like you, um, you guys mentioned earlier, we were talking a lot of stuff on Clever. Which which one of your channels? Clever News doesn't even pop up when you search Clever. Yeah. Under so, it, so yeah, a lot so of like interesting. Um, Kirsten, so uh, our editorial director, was on uh, a, a show this morning, a talk show, and she was mentioning how um, one of Tyler Oakley, a video that he did of uh, black people in the LGBT community who he looks up to, that video yep. was completely gone. Yep. So it's not just, you know, salacious, like, sexual right. things. No, it's no, just that's... any mention. So what do you guys – and, and, and a lot – I think uh, also what pissed a lot of people off was YouTube's reaction to it is when – everyone sort of started yelling and saying like what the hell is going on YouTube was sort of like um you know like it's just our policy like and so that really I think upset a lot of people because YouTube is such like a home base for people in the LGBT community people mm-hmm. feel for so sure at home. Absolutely. and so for them to sort of it's like a slap in the face a little yeah. bit for YouTube so what do you, what do you guys think Honestly, I was surprised. I think I live in my – I grew up in L.A. in a very, like, progressive city, so many cultures and different types of people. And I think just everything that's happened in the last year in our country has been – maybe I'm naive, but, like, some of the things that I feel like we're going through right now have been personally so shocking to Mm -hmm. me. And this is just another thing on the list that I'm like, wait, that's a thing? That's happening? Because call me crazy, but so many of the people – in the LGBTQ community that are on YouTube are some of the most like positive, yeah. inspirational, in- inspirational people, yeah. world changing people I know. Meanwhile, I understand why some of our content is blocked. I personally believe that when I meet an eight year old who's like, I love watching whatever video I'm like, <laughs> I am not. And, yeah. and you know, I do think that it is up to parents to protect their kids from right. like, you know, violence or, you know, overly sexual yeah. content or, and some of our content's edgy and I get that. Yeah. But to me, it's shocking that you would want to shield your kids from some of the most inspiring content right. that's out there, whether it's from I mean, whoever's making it, yeah. honestly. Mm-hmm. Well, so I think the problem is, is that it r- reminds me of the terms and service like thing that they updated. Right. right. Probably was that six months ago? Mm-hmm. It feels like a really it was, it was last ago, fall. I, I think. Like yeah. That that everyone freaked out because they were not they were demonetizing videos that were deemed inappropriate for advertisers. Yeah. So then we go in and look further and they like mention that like nothing's really changed blah blah but then we had random videos that were then demonetized mm-hmm. and yeah. nothing was inappropriate about them is that YouTube the way they're seeking out these videos and putting the restriction on them is that they're just like 
flagging words. Right. So like it's like if you statements. have one word that was on their list of right. like, no, that's inappropriate in your tags, even if it has nothing to do with the video, they're not manually going through and being like, I don't like Tyler Oakley, blah. Like, yeah. I'm not going to do this. But that being said, that's a problem and they yeah. need to fix it. And like, I know that they aren't able to go through manually, but like figure out a like, what are way they doing? Are they literally it? just like flagging the word gay? That's, I, I think yeah. that is. I was like, if that's what's happening, like, oh my God, yeah. fix your shit. Yeah. But like, if it's like, I don't know. But it's like, also we've been awkward. flagged before, for example, so I'll take credit for this. I produced a video <laughs> that was like nearly nude dresses. Oh. Mm. And it was like see through dresses on the red carpet. And like, there was some inappropriate outfits there. But we also and censored gets, all of the. Yeah, we like, censored actual. it. But if that gets age flag and like nude is in the title, I get it. That's fine. Like, yeah. someone talking about like the most inspirational gay icons. In exactly. History, That's absolutely ridiculous. How is that negative? One well, also, at least with the monetization thing, you could go through and like. Uh, appeal it and be mm. like hey this is actually fine like give me my money yeah this it's just the videos don't pop up so yeah. i don't think like tyler can log into his youtube account and be like no this is fine like don't yeah. restrict it because that's not even an option because no one even knew it was a thing yeah. i can't believe you said that it's been happening for seven years that's, I, so we like, both mentioned before this we were like i didn't even know it had a restricted nope, mode like nope. I, I mean it makes sense know. like i get that there's like parent like right. parent mode i almost so think that instead to... of doing a restriction okay. mode which seems like an easy thing like for YouTube and for parents to use I think parents should just go in and be like my kid can watch this channel I totally Maybe instead agree. of like restricting everything be more so proactively selective because then like they have to subscribe to the ones they want yeah to watch like my kid and... can only subscribe to like Disney Junior channel right, or something because right. you don't want your kid like clicking on like something that's like violent but what I don't or whatever get is, like, I feel like YouTube's pretty good at like keeping everything like pretty tight like there's right. nothing, like I'm like it's not like porn hub like it's yeah. not like your kid is no. gonna come across well, some crazy like you know I, I, that's why I that's if you're letting your kid it. watch YouTube what's the worst thing exactly. I mean like I'm sure there is some stuff on there that like that's like, but, like oh, literally the crap. Or As a, I wouldn't even know how to find that kind of but stuff but I think that's so what comes back to the parent like more if you're letting your kid just like be on an iPad right. all day and watch all of these videos where I'm are like, you anyways yeah <laughs> it's like bigger problem even if maybe it's like a per video like the parent gets a notification that they can be like approve they can watch that yeah. or something because actually like I guess we're just not searching for pervy stuff but I'll never forget <laughs> yeah. one time someone was like talking about butt clapping and I was with Dana and we were like what's <laughs> butt clapping things. so we looked it up on YouTube and the butt clap but people making oh. their butts clap it's I mean it's There's a lot. very cool it's very uh, artistic um, but then I was like wow this is on YouTube this seems no. like raunchy no. so there is some stuff you and I guess there's definitely a lot of cussing yeah like, that's true so but I just feel like, I don't know, growing up, my parents never had any kind of parental um, restriction, restriction on, on our TV. TV. Like, it was never like, you can't go Mine to this channel or that channel. Like, I, I guess know. I see that, like, TV is a little more like they have ratings. That's and true. They have, and like, they, have they can't rest say. Restriction. Yeah. And they have limits. And that but kind of this, I just, I don't yeah. know. I also, like, don't let your kids sit there and listen to it with headphones on. So you have absolutely no yeah. idea what they're watching. And they're just, like, in a corner. I yeah. mean, our parents were definitely, well, your parents bought you the CD, the Eminem CD. Oh, oh. Yeah. no. Yes, but, but it, it was, was edited. Oh, and I yeah. still, that has made it through all of the computers I have. So I still only have the edited <laughs> version. So, like, in the clean <laughs> version. And <laughs> I had the Color Me Back. Bad, um, I want to sex you up cassette tape, and my mom would just make me turn it down for that song. <laughs> well, it's because like, I think some, most parents know yeah. that like you can shield a little bit, yeah. but like they're gonna see it regardless. Right. So yeah, I think you guys kind of hit the nail on the head there. Where I think it just needs to be like a parent issue, where a parent yeah. can kind of go into their like settings, and if they want to shield their children from all of the inspirational LGBTQ people out there, I guess go for it. I mean. That's like a whole other issue, but yeah, it, it should just. Say, sort I mean, of like, be, I would hope you don't. Go I know for it exactly. That's what I'm saying. Dumb, like, but, but it's let it just kind of like lead to the parents. YouTube doesn't need to like heed to the few like to the parents exactly. that do want that to be a thing, exactly. and then punish everyone. Yeah. It's that, I'm still just shocked. They probably don't even get to watch YouTube anyways because because they're like too busy. Like I don't know. <laughs> I, don't I know. What right? are they doing? Ugh. I know, but actually, even like on top of the LGBT stuff, I know I saw Hannah Hart tweet that when you looked at her videos. She had something about, like, dealing with, like, depression or yeah. something like that. And that was restricted. I'm like, what? It's too much. Like, I think I'm they like, that just... has nothing to do with... So, like, what are people watching? Yeah, like, I don't Salad know. Fingers or, like, <laughs> Double Rainbows? That's it? Because well, that Double Rainbow guy was on drugs for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so that should be flat. I know. That's what... I guess what I don't get is, like, 
it's just it's I don't even know it's it's too much it's like and then you were right that YouTube's response was kind of like, oh, sorry. Yeah. Like, Whoopsie doodle. Mm, maybe, like, actually acknowledge yeah. that it's a problem. Well, again, like, you know, we mentioned, like, you know, YouTube is such a great place for the LGBTQ, LGBTQ community that, like, you know, for them, there's not, there's, you know, especially in, like, today's climate, like, there's just so much happening that YouTube is, like, a safe space. Yeah. And it just didn't feel like a safe space no. after that happened. So, uh, unfortunately, it's, I, I feel like there's still a lot of, shit going on with it but we'll keep you posted on what happens and you know hopefully um there's like like some sort of resolution i feel like they're they're gonna have to find a resolution because i mean that community you you have a lot of powerful people there's a lot of powerful people right yeah i know well we were kind of mentioning um we were you know the instant team we were kind of mentioning like do you think that there is any youtuber who would like straight up just like walk away if youtube doesn't take care of this I mean, maybe eventually, if it was like an ongoing thing yeah. and the issue wasn't like dealt with, they'd be like, be like, "I'm a going group thing, like a yeah. group." Boy We're all it. going to Vimeo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> LOL. No offense, Vimeo. I know. I love Vimeo for watching people's wedding videos. <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah. I go to Vimeo and watch wedding videos yeah. and proposals and cry. That's uh, usually like so uh, if you work in like you know editing and stuff. It's like here's a cut on yeah. Vimeo. I know with your password. <laughs> yeah. Ugh, I know. Um, oh, and it's nice because you can download the videos directly. Ex- exactly. Um, <laughs> yeah. So you think it would have to be like. A big not like, it, it, yeah. it would have to be like an underground like i feel like they're gonna, it's gonna be a thing where like, like if you thing. get like tyler oakley joey graceffa gigi Shane gorgeous Dawson, gigi Gord, like, like everyone just got together goes, they would all have dark. to walk out together yeah. but i feel bad because i mean i feel like if youtube stopped tomorrow like they would all be fine like they have things going on and well and and that's because after the terms change that's what a lot of people said they're yeah. like if my video gets unmonetized, like most of most YouTubers aren't making all of their money from right. AdSense. But then right. they're, they're the getting ones brand who, deals. They're right. getting they have books, book deals, they have, movies, yeah. and TV shows, yeah. etc. So, so you gotta people. feel bad for like the more low key ones who yeah. are like just starting up and like not quite there yet. Um, Honestly, I really just feel bad for the audiences that yeah. like need that content and are like are their lives are being impacted or changed or enriched by that content because the YouTubers we know who are a part of that community. They're amazing people. Yeah. They're doing great. They're yeah. killing it. Yeah. They're positive. They're confident. But the pe- there's a lot of kids out there who need to connect with someone. Right. And that's who I feel bad for. Yeah. So this this needs to be fixed. Yeah. Fix it, YouTube. Um, okay. So moving on. Spring break is right around. And do you guys, what do you have up your sleeve for beauty trip? Well, I was like, can we, spring we're break Coachella. ends after college. Everyone's yeah. like, spring break's coming. I was like, is it? No, right. like, oh, we're, going, we're going to Coachella weekend oh, one. Nice. <laughs> Lily scored us a sick, sick, sick house. Ooh. It is Bali themed. Ooh. It literally fun. looks like Cost Plus World Market just threw <laughs> up, but like in the best way possible. Yeah. So we're going to film two beauty breaks and a cheat day there. Mm-hmm. The cheat day is going to be eating all the Coachella foods. Ooh, so spicy I'm, pie. You have to get spicy oh my pie. God, is that that pizza? Little, I'm so excited. Spicy, spicy pie pizza, pizza is so good. the best. Um, and and then, these hot dogs are there. That's, there's lots. They also have, if you're in VIP snobbery, they have like sushi, acai bowls, Ooh. green juice. I mean, it is like snobby AF and I love it. all of the things. <laughs> yeah, so that's our spring break, I would say. And this year, like we are upping the Lily and I went to Coachella last year and tried so hard. I mean, we were trying so hard to like look like Coachella vomited on us. Yeah. And this it year we're gonna works. try even harder. Yeah. <laughs> we're like hiring a stylist. Ooh. Yeah. Like we're gonna be just like walking H and M ads probably. That's so funny. But I miss um, spring break. Yeah. It was always a good time. Oh. I didn't I never really did anything for college spring break. Um it like my college spring break, they always made it over the week, like wherever St. Patrick's Day was, uh-huh. oh. they made it because like where I went to college was like kind of a party school. So like they didn't want any students around. Right. And then I was like, my parents were not the kind of parents where I don't think they would have like funded me. Like I want to go to Cabo. Like they would have been like, no. So Guilty. <laughs> I know, same. Hello. Hello Cabo like, phone party. Thank you, mother. No. So usually my spring break usually consisted of me just like chilling at home like on the internet. So. I did freshman year of college. I went to Lake Havasu because mm. a friend had Which a house there. Which is actually insane. Well, and it is, but we stayed with her parents. So it was very much just like and her parents were cool. Very insane. Like, her, they party harder than we did. But um, it was super fun. But then sophomore, junior, and senior year, 
Cabo. Ugh, yeah, I Mango only did Jack jealous. Squid Row. I'm just jealous. That's all. I only did Cabo once, and this is like totally dating myself. But it was the year they were shooting that Spring Break movie. Do you guys remember oh, that movie? And with, they like, tried Selena to get us Gomez to be in it, and I was like such a little bitch even then. I was like, I'm gonna be a hard news reporter. They're like, Hey, girl, like sign the release, me and our movie. And I was like, Hell to the no! Oh, like not Spring Breakers with. No, no, no. Spring Break the movie. This is like... Like, Spring like Girls Gone movie. Wild? It's kind of like that. It was on... It was like an MTV production or something. I like, don't even remember a long that. time. Exactly. Like, we, we were <laughs> I was school. like, oh, Spring Breakers? I was, like, was going to say that. it was in the 1900s, but even I'm not that old. <laughs> not I mean, so it wasn't the 1900s. It wasn't. College. No. Oh, no. No. Well, by so then. you guys obviously um, do a lot of traveling and stuff. What? And Jocelyn, you were on the amazing effing ah, race. I know. Isn't that weird? Which that you is... would think that she would be better at navigating places but there's a lot to be said for the reason i got kicked off that show what so that being said what are some of your like best travel tips would you say you know so funny i was talking to jovenshire shout out Mm -hmm. to smosh games today because they're getting ready to travel a bunch and up until last week or maybe two weeks ago i had traveled every week this year oh wow and i think the main thing i've learned is that you have to like manage expectations for your life at home whether that means like making sure your trash is taken out or that like I make coffee and I'll be like gone for two weeks and then it's like moldy when I come back. Your plants are watered or whatever. I always take out my garbage before I leave for a And then I just, I don't really unpack. I have like a bag that has like extra chargers Mm. and like toiletries and whatever and it just makes it easier to constantly be ready to leave at any given time. Um, And I'm all about outsourcing. Like find an app for mm. anything for your laundry for someone to clean your food house delivery. food delivery grocery delivery because honestly if you have amazon prime it's as it's like i would love to do a spawn deal with them because i believe in them <laughs> so much but it's it's the same price so just make your life easier like mm-hmm. don't make things hard and then like only be in relationships with people that are willing to see you for like two days a year honestly huge thing that we talk about all the time is that we are super busy and a lot of people take that and then you'll, you'll see our posts on instagram and it's like oh my god they're having so much fun yeah. look at it they're too cool for me i know they don't care about me anymore i mean i had to book you guys on this podcast to like hang out with you so <laughs> I, I, get it. I get it i'm like amanda why are we gonna wait to hang out until after award show season and you're like oh i just thought and i was like no let's hang out sooner and no, then i'm this like this is perfect because then we got to leave work to come hang out exactly, exactly. <laughs> no but yeah. that's uh, there's i have a lot of friends that it sometimes will be not like upset it's not like pay attention right, to me, right, right. but it's like we'll drift apart because they you just have these cool opportunities and yeah. like you know it's for work and it's why not it's hard You're that young. It, it's for work but that it looks like it's only for right. fun right. and it's it hard to, fun too it's well it absolutely is but it's hard to it's to get people to people. understand like oh yeah. i am in miami and i did just post a photo on the beach but what you don't know is i was only there for like 25 minutes <laughs> yeah. I had to go we to shoot eye something. To get there. Yeah, we um, shot eight things. No yeah. complaints, though. I mean, it's been amazing. And this is truthfully what we've all been working for for so many years. So to have all of it, like, happening now. But traveling, like, and you got to learn how to sleep on a plane. Like, yeah. figure it the F out. Yeah. Have you have to. It it's so hard. No. I personally, she has good tips. Mine are just, like, I am not a great traveler. I don't love flying. No. And I just have so many suitcases everywhere. My apartment's a mess. So it's, it was, like... It's I need not, to take it's not easy. It's and not take out easy. my trash before we leave yeah. because I don't. Yeah. So you guys are going to Coachella. What are some songs that you would put, like, if you guys were going to go on a road trip, a spring break road trip, which you are technically, mm-hmm. you're going to drive the desert, what are some songs and some music that you would, like, put on your playlist? Oh, my gosh. Well, we have to listen to Lizzo again. <laughs> Do you know who she is? No. Love her so much. We so were introduced good. to her at Coachella last year on our road trip yeah, to was Coachella. Like, she wasn't Not at playing. Coachella. Has no connection yeah. to Coachella at all. I just really liked this one song. It was on the barbershop. Barbershop 3 <laughs> soundtrack. Right. Literally. Okay, so was I have Apple Nicki Music. Minaj? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. No, so I have Apple Music, which shout out Apple. I yeah. love much yeah. more than Spotify. I have oh, to really? say. I okay. like Spotify. Because Spotify, Spotify is better if you want to just like pick one song and then listen to a bunch of things like it. But I like always want to listen to something very specific. Right. And Apple Music, you can just like, right. it's like you own mm-hmm. all of the music in all of the world. But um, I am a basic bitch. So I just go to like today's hit yeah, yeah and that is what i listened that was to. on there but lizzo was on yeah. there and we found her the veronica's that song yeah. that's new to us but old <laughs> it's not what's it, it called like get my blood or something, something. i don't know my there's a really self. good um 
this uh, playlist on Spotify that I like to listen to on occasion. It's called Teen Party. So it's See, exactly. like that, that would be right up my alley. Yeah, teen Everyone's party. like, I hate it when it's like date questions. Like, what kind of food do you like? What yeah. music do you listen to? And I'm like, oh God. Like, don't. It's like open I have the palate door. of a five year old boy and then yeah. the music taste of a 13 year old girl. Ellie Goulding, too. Like, she, I feel like she gives us the Coachella. That's last year, I moods. think, on our way out. We I found a Coachella playlist mm-hmm. or just like the most basic mainstream yeah, yeah. songs that each of the people we knew no. which is like five people that are there yeah. yeah but as far as new music i'm trying to think of what i mean um into. love me some alessia cara the zed uh-huh. song stay mm-hmm. with her is really yeah. good um and i feel like chain smokers i mean even though all their songs kind of sound the same to me i don't actually care that's true yeah. like i'm cool with it <laughs> yeah um so we also have so speaking of like travel tips and stuff like that you guys obviously, I feel like you've kind of honed in social media and Instagram and all that kind of stuff. So, do you have any? You have. I'd like it's to say so you crazy. Have, but it's so weird. Um, what are some tips you have for people, like in terms of, like if they kind of want to become a digital creator, a content creator? What are some like mm-hmm. social media kind of tips you have for well, them? <laughs> First, I just have my rule that I told Jocelyn that oh, she's Oh, gosh. Not. I got in trouble because I like my scenic artistic photos. And over the holidays, I've been spending a lot of time in the des, the desert. Uh-huh. I posted what I thought was a gorgeous photo, not even taken on portrait mode, by the way, of a cacti. To which Lily was like, you have got to stop posting photos of plants. I forbid you from it. And I was in, I'm in NorCal and I wanted to post a photo of this gorgeous flower. And she was like no no plans <laughs> no, I wasn't even there she just heard me saying it in her ear I did um, that is so funny but on a serious note in general I would say like I think someone said to me one uh recently something about like oh your engagement's really good lately what's like with the right what's marketing the plan and I was like what marketing plan yeah. like, oh my god I think it all comes down to authenticity yeah and even when we'll do like the occasional branded thing because gotta eat yeah and yeah. like I don't I will definitely not do anything that I wouldn't actually use. Mm -hmm. And I always go back and forth with the brand several times, even on caption, because I'm like, this is not a commercial. (laughs) And we do have to, like, it's not just like you post about it and forget, like you're endorsing something. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure it works. So that's like the whole. In your voice always. The branded side of it. But also people like to see faces and they like to see. Um, something fun that I've noticed is like, oh, you think to post like, oh, I'm on the red carpet for this event. Let's post a photo. Yeah. But truthfully, some of my most liked photos are photos where like I look like I got electrocuted yeah, yeah. and I have no makeup on and it's just like a tight shot of my face and people are like, I think they see themselves in that more. Mm-hmm. So it just makes you more relatable, yeah. which is totally well, our, I guess our brand. I, I don't know. <laughs> so relatable so app. So yeah. relatable. <laughs> well, no, but then also Jocelyn um, always says that, because there's always like the Instagram models. Mm-hmm. And it's just like they'll have 2 million followers. Right. And it's just all these sexy pictures. But like no one is necessarily like that. They don't have like a bunch of diehard fans. Right. Necessarily. It's just mm-hmm. people like to look at their pictures. Yeah. So there's a difference between like having a pretty Instagram and having one that people are like, engaging with Mm -hmm. you on and something I've always thought about like just as a girl's girl like I really was never like a tomboy or like shocking to everyone Mm -hmm. is that I when I I think about building my audience and like who I want to have in my you know on my team long run I think of like women and girls because I mean if you're doing the whole like sexy Instagram thing shout out to you like there's so many hot girls that I like get workout inspiration from but like when you don't want to post like naked photos of yourself anymore in like 10 years where's your audience gonna go so I've always been more focused on like my girls and like making sure Mm -hmm. that I'm posting stuff that like I would want to (laughs) see yeah yeah and I like automatically was like oh your boobs oh my girl well I don't post them they're so so small there's nothing there that's why I keep them hidden my girls yeah um, no I was gonna say that Jocelyn always says that if you're gonna post a sexy picture be smiling in it. Right, yeah. right, right. Or like make a weird face. Like always have could, the balance. I don't think I could ever, if someone tried to take a photo oh. of me like that, I'd be like. Because uh. I have some girls that I know that are huge on Instagram and they are sexy. And they're always like, Jocelyn, we're going to help you be sexier on Instagram. And I was like, oh, good sexy. luck. I'm like, this no. is my sexy face. Like, yeah. Well, that's, I was listening to another podcast and they were kind of talking about um, people have like those perfectly curated Instagrams where you kind of like look at them and they all look so perfect. And the person was like, 
people who have their perfectly curated Instagrams like that are just like dead inside. <laughs> it's like, which is so true. Like I, I would even, have to know, agree um, with that. Megan uh, Riggs has like the most perfect, beautiful Instagram, ever, Instagram, and she works so hard to maintain. Right, it. I'll see her using the tooth whitening, totally thing in Facetune. But then I know her and Liza both just started second Instagram. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. then they could post the random stuff yeah. and like not have to worry about it fitting into like their the aesthetic. Because I have whatever. to say. Although I could never maintain something like that. And it does seem like a little neurotic. No offense, guys. Love you. Yeah. Do, do you. Like, if that's no, what yeah. you want. But, but they get a lot of brand brands. Brands love it. Right, and Instagram right, right, right. specifically loves yeah. it. So, so you're getting on that search page. You're getting more followers like, that and more likes business. that way. But, not, yeah. I feel like for us, it's like a supplementary, like, come see what we're doing. Yeah. But for other people, it's like, no, this is a whole separate you know, yeah entity. they're getting brand deals with like high-end fashion brands and like i'm getting a brand deal with shout out to chili's Woo! Me those cheese fries no, see, can I, we talk about uh, how mad and jealous i am about that <laughs> i'm like i have been like raving about chili's for years i know but they said that they saw that i like to eat each chip individually salted oh. so. she does. She shout out to so the chicken salt. crispers those oh, are my favorite they're those so, so good. good and chips and salsa and chicken crispers yeah. those are my life um so you guys had mentioned you've worked with like Megan Rinks mm-hmm. and Shane Dawson. You guys have worked with some really, really cool people. Is there anyone out there that you are like chomping at the bit to collaborate with? Oh my gosh. Well, we collabed a few times with Grace Helbig and Love I'll her. never forget Dreams. when Lily met her. We were at VidCon last year. So we were already like pretty big on YouTube and Lily's blowing me up on text. I'm at another party. She's like, Grace Helbig knows who I am. <laughs> Anywho, so we so Lily ended up meeting her. She said she like likes our content. We were like, what? Yeah, yeah. We collabed with her a few times. She had us on her podcast, which was like the coolest. And after that, it's like, where do we go from there? But there's a lot of people. I think we like share. Oh, oh yeah. I would love to collab with her. I say it every opportunity I get. <laughs> she has a great maybe maybe feed. one day she'll hear it. You know? <laughs> no. Um, obviously, Katy Perry is a dream. But, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. In terms of YouTubers, <laughs> realistic goals. Um. I, Liza Koshy, I think, is a comedic genius. She's and awesome. I've met her very briefly a couple times, and she's friends with Megan, so I'm hoping that that's, like, our yeah. end. We're going to get her on. Mm-hmm. We've DM'd a little. She just started following instant.me on Twitter. Oh, so. my God. Stop. I don't want to so brag, but... That's when she started following me. I was like, ah! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she everybody like a lot of people that we talk to like Liza is just like well and she's what cool. I love is that when Megan talks about her she goes imagine the girl in the the videos but like ten Even times better. more amazing yeah. like mm-hmm. she's what? just the coolest person that's cool um that's lovely I love to hear that um it's nice to hear about because I feel like you hear celebrity stories where you know you can kind of hear that someone is like maybe not the nicest person so it's very nice they say like don't meet your heroes because you'll be devastated by it i would say in the youtube world we haven't had any like everyone has been so and i think it's been like interesting slash confusing for like some youtubers because they know clever as entertainment news but then as we've started developing out this other side it's been really cool to like kind of be welcomed into the YouTube mm-hmm. community more so as opposed to like looking at it from the outside. Right. Well, because a lot of like in the beginning, Clever was like Justin Bieber, or Selena Gomez. Right. Like it was just celebrity focused. Uh-huh. And that's kind of your what Clever's bread and butter was like back in the day. And now it's sort of obviously still to a certain extent totally it's, still it's is expanded. expanded well and that's even because the segue even for when beauty break started was literally like we were doing celebrity makeup and right. then we were like we don't know what we're doing yeah. and then we just started <laughs> doing things that were trending online and it yeah. became much more about like internet culture than celebrity culture yeah which lucky for us internet culture has kind of Blown become the new and... celebrity culture so right i agree well that i mean that's like what instant like how instant was born mm-hmm. is there are these digital creators in this digital space and no one like you know obviously traditional celebrities quote quote have people who you know were under their umbrella but where is the you know people of digital stars and that's the interesting thing too is that like when i think celebrity i think people online people in traditional or whatever but when i think influencer Mm -hmm. i do not personally believe a lot of celebrities are influencers because they're untouchable out of reach which you know what that's their prerogative people can do whatever they want but i think that the game is just going to continue to change as far as like how people get jobs how people get endorsements and i don't think people should feel forced to share their lives but i think I bet you a lot of people in just normal celebrity culture are getting pushed back to like be on Twitter and yeah. be on Instagram well, or be wherever. I feel like those people are doing it because they love acting and that's like their craft. 
we're literally putting ourselves on the internet. So yeah. it's like when they're putting themselves in a movie, they aren't playing themselves and maybe it's have weird. nothing to do with what they're actually yeah. saying. Yeah. So it's especially like, what if the person doesn't have a great personality? <laughs> like, but that's or why someone like Jennifer like Lawrence is yeah. uh, so popular because like, and she's also not really on social media. No, so. not at all. But even just like her relatability in interviews, right. like that's why people like her. Right. Like you could have never seen a movie and you're still. Exactly. A so true. Um, so on a- oh, I know who I want to get on the show. Oh. Erica Jane, Real Housewives, oh. Beverly Hills. She's Shout out to her. I'm obsessed with her. I got to throw that out there before I forget. I continue. Uh, I die for her. The fact that you even said that, I'm like, I could talk for another hour about you Erica love Jane. Her. Of course. Although, did, la, she's having a really messy time. This right now. week's episode, she's if, melting down. For anybody Real Housewives, a, someone if on you're Real a fan, Housewives is melting down. I know. I right? mean, but I never she thought it would happen to her. But she's yeah. I think she's a very strong personality okay. on that show she doesn't show a lot of emotion and she had a full-on meltdown i have a lot of thoughts on that this is i could like, talk about it for like another, another podcast show. i know we could start another a whole other episode about that but um i know i think that would be great because she's on dancing with stars right now you she's should amazing. hit up just go to over to cbs studios knock on the door oh just, that's why we were talking about i just it, really yeah. want to hang out with her on a personal level yeah. you know she has anyone who has an alter ego a full-fledged yeah. alter ego so yeah. on board with my, my roommate and I were like what do we need to do to like become part of her squad like I'll wash your makeup brushes like I don't even know that's like, probably I'll literally a full time job I know <laughs> <laughs> like I will do the most she's the guy lowly. who's married to the Aaron Brockovich attorney yeah oh yes yes yeah, yes, 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 yes. yeah. and her. she yeah she has she's on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills she has this like she's Erica Girardi but then she has this like pop star alter ego that's just like so amazing Fierce. and like awe inspiring like I like, like mesh body suits. I can only hope to like one day be <sighs> on her level like that is so I think that's everyone's dream to just like and her husband kind of just like puts the bill for like her like pop uh, yeah, dreams so does she like actually do anything yeah she, she does. does she, she does, does like nightclub appearances I think they all make different money yeah like if it you're depends, like Kyle like, you're making like, more money like right. the hills even they totally like, yeah. yeah totally um so on a like a last note uh we kind of touched on this a little bit but what would you say is one of your favorite parts of being in the YouTube community in the YouTube space Gosh, I would say, on a cheesy note, yeah, it's as cheesy as possible. Cool to make people laugh. I just yeah. spit everywhere, so that <laughs> ruined that moment. But no, just making people laugh and like having people mm-hmm. say that you made their day and they were having like a, they were in a bad mood and you made them smile and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I'm oh my so gosh, stable. for sure. It's that's been like the craziest thing about us moving into the more personality stuff is people will genuinely, sincerely tell you that you changed their life or made their day or we meet so many people who discover us when they're going through something hard like whether that's being in the hospital or depressed and they have a lot of time to watch YouTube that's amazing I'm like wait us just like paying ourselves and making people happy that's cool and then also like selfishly it's been so neat to just meet so many friends and like work at a place where, (laughs) where we have a show where we can be like you know who I really want to meet? Like, I'm obsessed with Candy Johnson. Can we just have her <laughs> on? guys, that's what yeah. we do. And then that happens, and then we're, like, low-key freaking out, but then suddenly, like, Angela Johnson, do you know who mm-hmm. she is? The comedian? Bon Quigley, yeah, yeah. the nail lady sketch. We could barely keep it together. Yeah. When we first met her, we had her on Beauty Break, and now we're friends with her. We yeah. text. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so that's been really Actually, awesome. Actually, like, shallow note, hitting yeah. the microphone, um, being verified the oh, best thing to ever is it? happen. Oh, yeah, because people pay attention. Because there's a verified notification tab, and I feel like a lot of people don't know that. Oh, no. But I so have a different I, I have, like, my normal notifications, but then I click verified, and I only see stuff from verified uh, people. So that means that they have the verified tab, too. Yeah, yeah, So, yeah. like, if I tweet Katy Perry, I mean, I'm sure Maybe she has, she'll like, see a it. lot of verified people tweeting her. But, like, she has a higher chance of seeing it. Oh, Okay. I just we remember. Day. I remember when Jocelyn, when you interviewed J Lo, and you were just like, oh my "When gosh. did you interview J Lo?" I interviewed J Lo like when she did Boy Next Door yeah. with Ryan Guzman. Oh, yeah. I remember because also, not to. <laughs> This what? was a great movie. Um, I love She told that everyone movie. we went and saw that. She left. She was like, guys, it was the best movie I've ever seen. And we're all like, ah! it, was, it was a glorified <laughs> Lifetime yeah. movie. And I love Lifetime movies. I was, was going to so. say, Thank you. that's right up my alley, but yeah. not an Oscar winner. You know what's funny is like, you know, so like when we have like a serious movie interview, normally like another reporter will do it. But if it's like something like that or like animated, they send me. Or if it's like for children. Because <laughs> you I are always, animated. And the, in the studios, we'll always ask for your reactions. 
every time it's a movie that like no what one else you, likes, I quote? get into the trailer. It's like Jocelyn Davis from Clever says this is the biggest thriller of 2016 or whatever. But like it's January. It's the, but it's like the most generic. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or I'm like, great. great for the whole family. Great. And it's like, groundbreaking. Um, <laughs> wait, Comment. side note. Remember, uh, if you did not know this about Jocelyn, she was actually in the One Direction. This is us oh, movie. And it's so Multiple funny. Multiple times, I think. Yeah, my boy. And it was in it for oh a while. God. I was like, and fun fact, this is the best part. So... Over the years at Clever, our budget's been different. Yeah. There's been years where we have, like, no clothing budget. Now we do, thank God. But um, there was an year in time where I was like, F it. I'm just going to bring in all my prom dresses from high school. She's not kidding. Um, and wear all of them on yeah. Clever. Yeah. So the clip that is in the One Direction You're movie, I kid dress? you not, I'm wearing my winter formal dress from 10th grade. <laughs> I think it's like a powder blue. It's no, it's like a champagne. It's silk, oh and God. it's just like me, and I look redonkulous. And and we go to watch the movie on the big screen, and it's just like no. I was sitting next to you. I was yes. we were at a screening at, at like the Century AMC in like City. Century City. I was sitting next to you. I had seen you in the trailer. And you I think. knew that you were gonna be in it. I knew I was in it. Yeah, really they had to ask. I had but. seen you in the trailer, but then we, I was sitting next to you. And I'm like, wait, you know, it, like in this movie. It was for a long time. Yeah. It was like One Direction, O2 Arena. They got together. And I was like, I just remember seeing it. And like, that was my first reaction. I'm like, God, Jocelyn, the fucking prom People, yeah, yeah, people yeah, tweet yeah. me like, honestly, several times a week. Screen grab. There's that several they... things that Jocelyn will like show up to work. She'll like come into my office no. and she's wearing like mom jeans, hiking socks, and like platform sneakers. And I'm like, what <laughs> are you wearing? <laughs> well, I mean, I have to like, uh, like One Direction claim to fame. Oh yeah. I'm quoted on their Wikipedia page. No. Like, oh, what? You what? are? To brag. I think like, I did an article about like their first single like coming out like mm-hmm. in the US and they like they, they noted. Did. So if Harry Styles is that like, ever on the Wikipedia is page, made it. Oh, my name. Amazing. Um, but on that note, I mean thank you guys so much this is so for fun. joining me. We'll have to have you back. We'll have to get like Aaron in. We'll have yeah. to get all the clever Oh my gosh. People. Awesome. They would love it. This is awesome. Yeah, yeah, thank you guys. Any final thoughts? Any do you want to tell people to tune in? Where can people watch you? Where can All people follow over you? the internet. Yeah. <laughs> if you search Clever on YouTube, you'll be overloaded. But if you want to see a lot of stuff with us, Clever Style, spelled with two Vs. Mm-hmm. We're on the social meds. I'm at Jocelyn Davis. She's at Lily underscore Marston. It's very surprising that she would get it right. Because, because I usually get it wrong. Yeah. Because on Snapchat, she's at Lily Marston. So it's very hard for me. <laughs> uh, yeah. And then again, follow Instant on so we're on the social meds as well. <laughs> yeah. I love that word. I'm using that now. Um, we're at instant dot me, instant dot me. And then also remember to subscribe and leave a rate us and leave a review. It really helps. We would appreciate it a lot because we're a new baby podcast and we need all the help we can get. Yes. Um, again, thank you. This thank you. Cool.